So deep adaptation. Um, and um, I think everybody here is from Hertfordshire, but it, it, it doesn't matter if not really. Um, so my name's Kimberly Hare. Um, and um, I wanted to start with um, asking you really, each of you, what, uh, what, what brought you here and what would, what would make this a fantastic uh, use of your time? So let's um, let's start with um, let's start with you, Nigel. Actually, if that's all right. So, what brought you here? What would make this a great use of your time? What would be really valuable for you? I mean, to me, um, deep adaptation is deeply depressing and disturbing, but probably very necessary. And so that's why I, I want to um, hear it not to be depressed, but to think about what we can do in terms of being more resilient. And my wife, Claire, wanted to come as well, and she couldn't. Uh, that's why she will. She, she, I was asking about the recordings so right. together later on. OK, brilliant. So thank you very much, Annabelle. Okay. Um, yeah, no, thank you for having me here. I guess what brought me here was meeting you, Kimberly and Kate, um, because Rosie and I are, have been trying to find some connection, I think, in the Three Rivers community with others that who, who want to think about these issues, you know, and what is happening to our planet. Um, and through that, we met you, um, found out about this webinar. And I think for me, what would make it really valuable is Having a space to try to work out, have it, a chance to, to think about how I feel about all of this and to get some clarity on the choices that I make. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that, that will be it. Fantastic. Thank you, Annabelle. Emma, you want to go ahead and unmute yourself? Yes, hello. Um, well, I'm a district councillor at St Albans District Council and I work with Kate on a number of um, issues within the ward that I represent and Kate lives in, but also um, I have an interest in this partly because for the last 20 odd years I've been married to somebody who works in sustainable development, particularly becoming an expert in renewable energy. Um, and recently specialised in wind and I think he's now moving more into solar. So I've always at home been on a trajectory of looking at how we can actually reduce emissions and just change the world. Whereas you're coming at it from a, a rather uh, possibly quite a realistic point of view that, that we're not going to achieve that because we just don't have um, enough interest or enough resource. And certainly COVID is diverting us away from all of the good work that we had done up to now Although I quite like the Build Back Greener message that's coming from our government, and I think the EU is also on board with that also. And I think we tend to um, rather dismiss other countries around the world um, as being not on board, but in fact, actually, we fail to make the recognition that actually the United States and Europe are actually quite far behind countries such as China and India. So what I would like from the time this morning and I have to admit I don't think I can commit to the two hours I've got too much to do but I would like to hear certainly in the next hour or so um, what you are actively going to be able to do to make a difference um, what activism are you going to plan because I, I there are plenty of forgive me for I don't want to dumb it down but there are plenty of talking shops but what are you actually planning on achieving? And that's what I'd like to hear from you in the next hour. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Emma. Rosie. Hello, everyone. Um, yes, like Annabelle, I recently, well, I recently retired and I've been trying to find um, like-minded souls in the Three Rivers area so that I can put as much kind of energy and kind of thought into what I'm doing and make sure that I'm putting my energy, I suppose, into things that are going to be most constructive, really. Um, 
because I don't want to be wasting my time, if you see what I mean. I yeah. want to, uh, that, that's important. Um, I suppose I feel, um, I would like to feel by the end of this, a sense of, a, a sense of hope and motivation. I, I have to be honest, I'm quite fearful that I might not feel like that. Um, and um, that's making me feel a little bit wary about this. I understand the, um, well, I don't understand the enormity of the crisis clearly because um, I still do have a sense of some sort of hope and optimism. Um, so um, I, I'm hoping that by 12 o'clock, I, I don't feel completely discouraged um, and de-energized. I hope yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sonia. Hi. Yeah, I agree with uh, both Rosie and Emma, actually, that um, I just, yeah, I want to, if there's action that we can take, um, I don't want to be too depressed by it all. That, that's my biggest fear about coming here today, actually, is that I'm going to end up just being upset by it more than coming away thinking, ooh, um, <laughs> I, I read a lot of climate change stuff and I've got my head around the fact that we are steaming towards at a ridiculously fast rate we're steaming towards a two degree change and uh yeah it's that that i think we'd be lucky if we can stop it at two degrees and that is quite depressing so um yeah, yeah it's yeah <laughs> i understand i understand and you know, of course, I can't guarantee what your feelings will be <laughs> at the end of this. Um, but certainly for me, and Kate and I will talk more about this, um, there is, um, it, it's not, um, it's not all doomy and gloomy. Like, you know, the, the science is, is, is scary, um, but there's, there's something that we find as we accept this, um that that is really rather wonderful so i'm going to talk about that more at the at the end as well um and i always think you know um better to kind of look it in the face head on than to you know la 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 <laughs> um just kind of uh try and numb yourself or or, or deny it because then you're going to be as rosie said you 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 know there's a danger that you'll be spending your time and and valuable energy um, on things, on the wrong things, possibly. Very good. Okay, so just a very, oh, and Kate, sorry, I should give you an opportunity. What do you want? You've seen all this before, of course. Um, oh, what do I want from this? Um, it's always interesting to hear you speak anyway, Kim. I'm always going to get something new out of what you say, but I think um, I just really would love to to connect more with with everyone who's who's got an interest in this. Yeah, yeah, fabulous. Thank you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go really quite quickly through this first uh, part so that we so that we can accelerate getting to uh, the things that you're interested in. But I don't want to skip it entirely because I think it's very important as context. And I know you've read the Welcome Pack and I know that you know a lot already. So don't see any of this as kind of patronizing. So Kate and I are here representing HEART, uh, which stands for Hertfordshire Enabling and Adapting for Resilience Together. We're a small group of residents um, and um, we're committed to contributing to local community resilience, both practically and emotionally. Um, if we um, look at our kind of focus, um, it splits really into awareness and education, and, and that includes engaging with local leaders, which we have been doing, um, informing and supporting um, and educating uh, the, the general public as well. And in terms of contributing to community resilience, um, we provide support, um, uh, both, both practical and emotional, and we want to kind of create a network of deep ad adapters um, and, and certainly campaign and take, take actions. Um, but it's not in an attempt to kind of 
oh yay, we can turn it all round. Okay, it's it's really asking people to wake up to what's happening um, and more about that later. So the changing face of climate awareness, I'm sure you've all seen this meme, which has been doing the rounds. Um, <clears throat> and um, I think you're right, uh, Emma, when you say that, uh, you know, COVID has obviously taken a lot of eyes off of this ball. Um, and, you know, just, just to kind of begin to face the facts um, and, and we've been involved somewhat in uh, the Three Rivers District Council, you know, looking at their climate action plan, giving them some feedback about uh, possible blind spots. And um, just a couple of quotes here, Peter Carter, IPCC, uh, you know, we've had 26 COPs, 25 COPs, um, and yet we've seen a 60% increase in emissions since they started. So something's not working. And Jen Bendel, who, as you probably know, is the uh, creator of the Deep Adaptation Agenda and Community, um, millions of people are already suffering. Uh, it's worse than we've been told. We are now in danger. So Deep Adaptation is about trying to slow the problem down, trying to extend the glide, if you will, but also very importantly, um, to help and support each other through this. Um, and that's why, you know, this phrase community resilience is, is so important to us. By the way, if you, if you, if you have a, a burning question, please ask as we go along. Um, just to kind of back up, this is Wolfgang Noor and his famous graph. Um, you know, we've been trying to act probably seriously um, since 1992, and that's all of those things there have coincided um, with this 60% increase. Emma, you raised your hand. Would you like to come in? Yes, yeah, so I just have a quick question before we move on. You mentioned um, a societal collapse. What do you mean by that? So we mean um, <clears throat> a, uh, a, a, some people call it a breakdown, some people call it collapse, some people call it a transition, um, but essentially a, a, um, a breakdown in our existing way of life with all the kind of neoliberal capitalism that goes on with that, you know, the, the civilization as we know it. Um, we believe that that's, um, that's not gonna happen all at once. It's gonna be probably patchy and messy and indeed is already happening around. What do you the mean, well, sorry, just to stop you. Um, describe what you mean by it's already happening. What, 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 do you, what comes to mind when you say that? Um, so, uh, Various, um, I mean, I don't want to go into a whole list of the different countries and how they're affected here, but I can certainly, I can certainly send you that. Um, well, I mean, I, I, do, I do know a reasonable amount already. I think what I'm just looking for is that I, I dip into quite a lot of webinars and groups and sometimes I get phrases coming at me um, that can hide a multitude of assumptions and opinions sure. that um, may be based on on a good source and a good um, uh, a good source, a good academic source. But um, sometimes they're not because we all read um, all manner of things, and I, like a lot of people, have reshared social media posts that are actually completely untrue, but they sure. seemed good at the time. Sure. So I, I would just, I would actually like you to be quite specific about what you mean by societal collapse. Now, a collapse of, and I don't want this to, to take away too long on your, your presentation, but um, and I would like to see you be a little bit more specific about what you mean by that. Because on the one hand, that's alarmist. Um, two, we have got children that are suffering with mental health issues. They're looking at the economy globally that they're now inheriting from COVID. They're looking at the planetary collapse that they are inheriting. And I think it's extremely, um, it would be extremely irresponsible for us to start to actually throw around those sorts of phrases without being able to be specific about what you're referring to. And, and I actually would rather that you didn't, but 
if you want to send me something on email because you want to carry on with your presentation, please do so. I will, I Can will. Can I just say, um, the whole situation in Syria is, is pretty much, um, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that's climate change related. Yes. Yes, so I did. those kind of issues, and then you know oh, yeah. the extra migration, and then you're getting the formation of UKIP and divisive politics with all this kind of stuff. That's where we're coming from. Okay, I, all right. I will. I will send you email, Emma. Thank you very much. And I just wondered if, and, and part partly it was kind of that's why I sent the welcome pack round because there were lots of examples in that, um, including, um, you know. Jen Bendel's paper. Have you read that? No, I haven't had time. I'm sorry. I'm no, that's okay. okay. Yeah. So I'd, I'd recommend if you do have time that you go back and read that because Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Christmas. Absolutely. Thank you so okay, much. You. Um, so um, as we know, it's it's not it's not just about emissions, and 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 we do get. I mean, emissions are really important, um, but we we also have these other tipping points that. Um, you know, we've we've passed nine of the fifteen, and that's been well accepted now um, by scholars and academics and scientists, and we're racing towards the others. Um, and uh, you know, ecosystem collapse again. We know uh, there's a really good video just been published. Actually, uh, I watched it early this morning with Robert Hunziger. Um, and um, he's exploring different parts of the world and what's happening now in terms of ec ecosystems collapse. So you've got Antarctica, we know Australia, Amazon, oceans, Greenland, Arctic. Um, so there's that YouTube link there if you uh, want to go and follow that up. Um, and I wanted to just make the point that, um, you know, COVID is not a separate issue. Um, and, and there are differing views about this, but you know there is a lot of a lot of science. This is this is all connected. Um, COVID has come from you know um, degradation of of uh, habitats for wild animals from deforestation um, and and you know just just humans ex expanding more and more. Um, so. Um, it's 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 not something which is just a kind of a one-off separate thing. It's it's all rolled up with climate change. And the biggie, I think it's the biggie, is is methane. Um, we are expecting a fifty gigaton burp, as they call it. Um, and again, you may know this, but the last time we had a mass extinction, the Permian mass extinction, which was two hundred and fifty million years ago. Um, it caused 96% of all life to go extinct. And they're pretty sure that was, that was methane. Um, so here's an article uh, again from October, 2020. Um, so why are most people either ignorant of or in denial about it? And there's lots of psychological reasons. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're not, we're quite poor. Um, at, at paying attention to things that aren't right in front of our face. And I think COVID was a really good example of what can be achieved incredibly quickly um, by governments and communities when there's an obvious emergency. This doesn't look obvious to most people yet at the moment. And Daniel Kahneman, uh, a Nobel laureate said, if you were to design a problem that the human mind is not equipped to deal with, climate change would fit the bill perfectly. Um, we also perhaps have to look at the media um, and, you know, they're, they're, and, and, and also that it's only the most courageous scientists who, who speak out, although that's changing quite fast, I've noticed, in the last few months. There's been a, a fair bit of shooting the messenger and people have been kind of discouraged from uh, sharing what, they, what they've seen and what they've noticed. Um, but surely there's still time. Um, well, um, perhaps we can reduce the harm and it's really important to do our very best. And there's lots of effort going into that, as you know. Um, but again, an interesting, like if you read the IPCC report, 
We have to have a 7.5% cut in emissions every single year for 10 years to stand even a 50-50 chance of staying below 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels. Um, and our emissions are still going up. And, and um, you know, COVID, if you look, at, this is in a global lockdown, folks. Our emissions went down by five to 7% during 2020. And of course, as we know, most countries are planning to reboot the economy as soon as they possibly can. So what we're saying is, it, instead of seeing this predicament as one that's going to be you know, felt by the next generation, we need to start focusing on um, today, tomorrow, next year, um, and you know, really, really address that. Um, and an interesting aside, um, you know, I think you'd agree the MOD and uh, banks and hedge funds are not normally considered to be like wacky doomists. Um, the MOD is working on this right now. It has 60 people full time. Um, and they're saying that by 2030, the world could face a perfect storm of food, water and energy crises. Uh, and I've given you their 2020 report there. And JP Morgan, in, in a recent report, um, the situation, uh, one cannot rule out catastrophic outcomes where human life, as we know it, is threatened. Um, and, you know, it's that quote at the bottom again from Jem Bendel, you know, if you really are rooting for humanity to make the best of a bad situation, you might want to have some people uh, with other values, instincts and training than just the military and the bankers. Um, and just recently in December this month, um, I mean, there've been many, many warnings from scientists over the, over the past decade or so. Um, and uh, just recently, in fact, Kate was one of the signatories to this because she's a PhD. Um, basically warning, you know, saying, saying that we call on policymakers to engage with the risk of disruption and even collapse of societies. Um, so, yeah, I want to know how all this makes you feel. Um, and what's the story you're currently holding about, about all of this? And by the way, you know, I'm absolutely, I'm not going to try and convince you to change your narrative, but I'd be very curious about, about what it is. Um, and and, and um, psychologically, how that either serves you um, or gets in the way of doing what you're, you feel called to do. Um, so let's start with you, Sonia, this time. I've done something to my Zoom. I can't see you. I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm just listening in. So please don't come back to me unless you can fix me and put me back on screen because I've just technophobe here, have no idea what I've done. Sorry. Okay. Actually, I think what I'm going to do because it will be quicker is I'm going to I'm going to put you into breakout room really quickly. So I'm putting you into breakout rooms. I'm just going to give you about five minutes to uh, have a conversation. How, how does this make you feel? And what's the story? What's the narrative that you're holding about, about the future and why? See you in about five minutes. I'm saying I, I, I got cut off there, but I, I think the way forward is to make individuals feel empowered that they can make changes in their own back garden or in their block of flats with a communal garden. And unless we start to do that at a, lo a local level, um, I think people are just going to think, oh, well, that's the central government's responsibility, isn't it? I think it's about making sure that everybody understands that they have an individual responsibility. And I think that's where your activism should focus. It's, it's about engaging the communities through, um, through the parish councils, through the district council, through the residents associations that are not in part, that are part of a parish. That's where you need to go. You need representatives in each of your wards and start to um, 
if you can hold meetings outdoors. I know at the moment we've got a restriction on groups of six, perhaps in the spring that will change. Um, and start getting people to do all the things which they can do that you know that they can do on an individual basis. That's, that's and sorry, I'm going off on one. No, 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 that's great, Emma, thank you. So anything in your breakout groups you wanted to bring back like that was a common theme or, or you thought it was worth sharing with all of us, anybody? I suppose I'm still stuck between, on the one hand, you know, I'm coming to this with a lot of energy and a feeling of hope and wanting to, very much wanting to engage local people, raise awareness, get people on side, let's get all sorts of things happening in our area. Even though when I have spoken to people, some people, I, I find that hard at times, but you know, I'm willing, I, I, that's what I want to do. But then when I, hear the scenario that you are describing, um, then it, um, I still find that, I, I'm still stuck in that place where it feels extremely um, demoralizing. Uh, it's such a destructive scenario, the, the scenario is so terrifying that then it makes me feel, what, what's the point of doing anything? Um, but this is, but this is what I'm trying to say is that if you keep on, on doing a softly, softly approach of raising awareness, I don't think you're going to get anywhere. This is about trying to make every individual person realise what they can do, what they can actually actively do. It's about instruction and leadership and mobilisation as opposed to just raising awareness. I mean, I'm done with raising awareness. I want to hear what you are actually going to do. Are you going to knock on doors and canvas people and say, how many trees have you got in your garden? Could you put an oak tree in there? I could drop one off on your doorstep. Get the tree action group to mobilize a collection of all the saplings, use the allotments as a storage place and actually start asking people whether they can put another tree in their garden and home a sapling. That's the kind of activism that I want to see coming out of this because you're not going to be, a, I mean, yes, it's great to read academics. It's great to understand the bigger picture, but you're just going to terrify people. And then a lot of people are just gonna go inside and put a blanket over the head and say, well, if that's where we're headed, what's the point? There's I, no point. I think, I think some people will. And, and, and this is why it's so important for me, um, you know, the kind of the narrative, what is it that gives you hope? And uh, I hear you totally, Emma, about actions um, and also individual, taking individual responsibility. Um, and, and <clears throat> but you know, there's that, that wonderful statistic, well, not so wonderful, that 70% of emissions around the globe are caused by 100 companies, right? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I think it's more than just individual actions. Um, and coming back to you, Rosie, uh, I, I hear you. Um, and there probably was a brief period for me when I first kind of woke up to this that was similar. But these days, I, I don't find it demotivating at all. I find it actually extremely motivating. And there's been quite a lot of research done about this in the deep adaptation community. So there will be some people who, you know, put a blanket over their heads. Um, but actually, and I think they found that you, you found this in XR, Nigel, that, that, um, that what it does for a lot of people is really engages them, wakes them up and makes them act now um, with incredible energy and, and commitment. Um, so uh, I guess what I'm saying, Rosie, is I understand where you are. It's perfectly human and, and understandable. Uh, and um, it's not always going to be like this, right? You will come through that stuckness, is what I'm saying. Um, as you listen more and more to your own kind of inner nudges about what's the most appropriate thing to do. Um, because I think that is, um, we have, I think all of us, although we, we sh should be collaborating and working together, I don't think there's like, Right, here's the three things. Um, I think it's different for different people. For some people, it's planting trees. For some people, it's, you know, uh, <clears throat> just uh, raising resilient children. 
for other people it's 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 about you know creating community neighborhoods and so on um, and it's it's kind of working out for ourselves what the most the wisest thing is to do so thank you for that um, and um, so now I've uh, I wanted to get on to the kind of meat and two veg, as it were, of, of, of adaptation and deep adaptation. So now that I've cheered you all up. Um, <clears throat> so adaptation and uh, mitigation. And one of, our, one of our critiques, if you like, um, about what's going on is although there's some adaptation going on, the vast, you know, the, the major focus is, is on mitigation. And that's important too, um, not saying let's stop that, but you know, quite a nice kind of um, analogy here. Um, so, if you imagine a car racing towards a brick wall, the driver has two primary tools: the brakes and the airbags. Mitigation is like the brakes. Um, adaptation is the airbags. It's about protecting and preserving and cushioning people and nature. Um, as this progresses, and, and, and we need both. And it is starting to happen, um, especially I've noticed in uh, some of the businesses and organizations that I'm familiar with, you know, companies are starting to do adaptation because they know they have to, they know they have to. Um, and there is, as you again may know, Baroness Brown, who's the deputy chair of the Committee on Climate Change, focusing specifically on adaptation. She's talking about, you know, we need not just a race for carbon zero, we need a race for resilience. Um, and, uh, you know, that's very much in line with, with, with our view. So that's adaptation. It tends to be very practical, very action oriented, right up your street, Emma. <laughs> um, but there's also this deep adaptation. Um, which is that maybe, just maybe, it's time to accept um, that collapse or breakdown is likely inevitable or already unfolding um, in order that we can do our best to reduce harm and love and support each other, uh, whatever happens and how we go through this. Um, saving what we can, finding meaning and joy in our every, everyday lives, um, but the trouble is, and this is the kind of psychological crux, if you're still holding out for, we can turn this around, it's really hard to do this. It's really hard to do this. Um, and, and, um, and, and I know for myself that, you know, I've, I've kind of gone through several narratives. At one point I was holding four simultaneously. <laughs> um, but there is, um, a tremendous focus, and I'm not, again, I'm not trying to convince you to have this focus. This webinar is about just sharing what deep adaptation is and how it can be helpful, but there is tremendous freedom and focus that comes from this acceptance. Um, and by the way, when I talk about acceptance of collapse, that doesn't mean um, extinction that means we're just gonna to have to prepare to live in a very different way. So that brings us then to the four R's of deep adaptation, which is a really useful framework for asking ourselves questions um, under each of these headings. And there, many of them are extremely profound. Um, resilience is about inquiring um, what is it that's most important now? You know, people have seen during lockdown that their priorities changed significantly. Um, but if we just think about our whole lives and humanity and the planet, what's really important now? Is it to kind of get back to normal as quickly as we can? Um, and how can we build and, and, and sustain our resilience, both outwardly in, a, in the practical sense, like seawalls, building seawalls, you know, burying cables, whatever it is, but also from an inner perspective. 
how can we, um, as I said, still find that we have lives of meaning, joy, and purpose, despite all of this? Relinquishment, what can we give up? What should we give up in order not to make matters worse? Restoration, what can we bring back? And reconciliation, what can we do to make peace with, love and support others? So um, really the rest of this webinar is gonna be about that and uh, giving you an opportunity to share your ideas under each of the four R's and, um, and also sharing some of, our, some of our ideas, strategies and tools uh, with you. Um, and again, after the webinar, I can send you, um, you know, printouts of all of these so that you have them. Um, so what do you think? Just kind of um, unmute yourself if you want to. What do you think of, of, of that framework? And what are some, like, are you starting to get some ideas under each of those four um, that, that may, you know, um, give you a sense of, of focus agency and action and by the way and i wrote a blog about this a while ago i think these four r's are a pretty decent way to live climate change or no climate change you know there's actually real benefits in asking ourselves these questions anyway it leads to a much more kind of um community uh love support resilient way of living um, even if we weren't facing this predicament. So over to you. Um, what, are, what are some of the things that occur to you as you look at those four? Um, if I'm honest, I, I, I find I, it makes me a little angry um, because I think we should be fighting more. Um, I mean, I, I appreciate the... Um, the inclusiveness of it and the kindness behind it, because I think there, there's just not enough kindness in the world, really. But I just think that we ought to, I, I don't think it is too late to still be fighting this and to, as I have already said, to give everybody, every single person, um, an idea about what they can do to contribute to the bigger whole. And yes, I, I hear you about the 100 companies, the multinational corporations that have a stranglehold on the world in terms of their emissions, in terms of their appalling supply chain behavior. Um, fashion industry in particular, and the carnage they're creating in certain countries around the world in polluting with chemicals um, is one aspect to what you're, I mean, I think the problem that we have is that the problem that, that we are facing is too complex for people to understand. And what we try to do in many circumstances, in many situations, is apply a reductionist approach to reduce it down to a three letter campaign slogan, because that's yeah. what people respond to, get Brexit done. I agree. What people will grasp and go, oh, thank God for that because they've got too much else going on in their lives. Yeah. So, um, so uh, I, I, I hear you and I, I you know, I, I respect your stance that you're not ready to give up the fight. No, yet. That, and that's, that's absolutely fine. Yeah, it's absolutely fine. Um, and, um, you know, I, I guess, you know, as far as this webinar is concerned, um, you can either, you know, with my love and gratitude for coming, sign off now. <laughs> well, I am going um, or, to have to go anyway. But well, yeah, yeah. Or um, you know, uh, look at look at these look at these four R's uh, as as like um, just something to consider and reflect on. Um, I th I think I mean I think what you're doing is laying the groundwork for a good framework to rest us upon when in a year, 18 months time, we are still banging our heads against a brick wall, which I think is highly likely, but I'm, I'm not ready to be, I mean, you know, Bolsonaro in Brazil needs to be taken down and imprisoned. We are not going to get back that Amazon rainforest. 
is going to, you know, the, the complex ecosystems that they have destroyed. We're not going to get that back, but we can actually ring fence what, what, what hasn't been destroyed. Um, but I, I mean, I, the one thing I wanted to um, quickly mention just before I, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to go. Um, you mentioned um, local, um, it was to do with uh, community initiatives and community groups are actually starting to come together to create local electricity generation, clean electricity generation. What isn't being talked about terribly much, but it is it is gathering a lot of pace, is the local electricity bill. Yeah. Um, have you have you come across that? Yeah, a little familiar with it, yeah. Okay, so that is going to give uh, community groups the ability to become their own utility providers, yeah. which is different to what you've mentioned in your webinar. The webinar refers to the community, uh, the CICs that have been set up um, to enable communities to develop their own uh, clean energy, whereas the local electricity bill is going to enable local groups to become octopus, for example. Um, and, and I think that, for me, is a way to bring, uh, to empower individuals to be able to not only generate their own renewable energy, but to get an income and a living from it. And that's the kind of initiative and incentive that you need, particularly in this COVID world. You need to give people the ability to make money from being green. And if, if we do that, you will, get, you will get many more people coming on board, particularly as people are losing jobs. So I'm going to leave that thought with you as I go, because I've got to physically go and meet somebody else outside for a cup of coffee. Okay. Um, well, thank you so time. much for coming, Emma. Really appreciate it. Not at all. But that's the kind of thing I would like you as a group to to try and enable people as well as preparing for the worst. OK. Yeah. Sorry. Thanks, Emma. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm, still, I'm still angry and I'm still going at it. All right. Bye. Bye. Lovely to meet you all. Bye. Good luck. Take care. Bye. Great. Um, Nigel, are you still there? We have a lovely picture of you. I, I am here. I'm just trying to oh, limit right. limit my um, my broadband usage. Okay, fab. I'm having fab. to look after my mother at the moment and her broadband. Oh, Great. Okay. Um, um, yeah. I, I I think all the four R's made sense, and if it was just people like us, I think we'd come up with a new local community that would be involved in in sharing. Um, growing things and, and finding ways of, of, of adapting and, and living together. I fear, though, about the breakdown of law and order. And uh, I, I really worry that actually um, I, there was a line in the Jem Bendel deep adaptation paper that really chilled me. And he, it was something like, uh, would you be prepared to shoot somebody who is coming to steal your food supplies? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know how I will respond in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's my fear. It's the breakdown of law and order. It's not that all of those four R's could actually be put to good use in establishing a, a, a sustainable um, yes. Yes. community. But one of, the, one of the things which kind of comes under probably, I don't know, resilience or um, reconnection is, um, you know, on that point, um, like one of the things I always say to people is get to know your neighbors really well now, because, um, you know, when you do, when you, when you do, um, you're more likely to, um, you know, there's a, there's a lower likelihood that they're going to want to shoot you if you already have a, a, a deep, <laughs> a deep and loving relationship. So that's why we're so obsessed with this, you know, neighborhood community resilience where, 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 where people kind of are acting as their best selves um, uh, because they, they already have those, those commitments, those relationships, those, you know, those networks uh, very locally. Um, okay. But yeah, yeah. Can I just um, Please. At, one, at that point, I think it was in one of the webinars with a Q&A to Jem was um, one lady had kind of said, you know, if we're, we're all on a, a life ring in the ocean, on our way out I'd rather know everyone who's holding on with me and um, and love them absolutely absolutely and that's where yeah. I'm coming from now I want 
to connect our neighborhood as much as possible so everyone can say hi in the street and know each other and that way they're more likely to work together yeah 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 so um I was at this point going to put you into breakout rooms again we're quite a small group now um so what would you what would you rather would you rather kind of brainstorm in this group of six or whatever it is um or would you rather me just share some of the ideas under the four R's? I'm I'm easy either way. Personally, sadly, I've I've got to go now. I do apologise because I'm I'm really finding this very very helpful. But I so much look forward to seeing the uh, the the recording of the next section. So, um, uh, I, I, apologies. I I'm, I've got to move on. I'm, I'm, All right, Nigel. Day for me, okay. so Thank you so okay. much. Thank you Thank so you. much for coming. Okay. Bye bye yeah. now. Take care. Bye. Dropping, yeah. dropping like flies. Yes, Rosie, over to you. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I am a great believer in community and in, in getting to know all of one's community. I mean, um, I suppose, you know, I do believe in trying to model best practice. That's, that's the way I've always tried to live my working life as well as a teacher. Um, so, you know, in that respect, I, I completely buy into the idea that, uh, that the four R's make per perfect sense in terms of leading a good life, don't they? Uh, let's be honest, we don't need all this stuff. I think so many of us are realising and have done for a number of years now, we've got far too much stuff anyway. It's just ridiculous. We're all trying to give it away um, yeah. and encourage people to, as the, or the whole idea of reuse, repair, or uh, all, all this whole these all these principles that, that we'd much rather go back to i'm actually watching a video on how to darn socks which i think i was taught it when i was a little girl but need a little bit of practice again so you know i, I totally buy into all these principles to make perfect sense to me i suppose the bottom line is that i've always believed that this that when the going gets really tough and we are fighting to survive um, I'm not sure then, I'm not sure that, um, okay, we try to look after our community, but what about another community rustling in, trying to get our water or our food or, uh, you know, it's a hugely frightening prospect. I remember when we were all terrified of being blown up in a nuclear war back in the 70s and 80s. Um, all those books I used to teach at school, there were these scenarios of a few people left after the world was, you know, virtually destroyed and what was going to happen then and I, I, I mean I find it very hard to imagine that but when I when you mentioned Jem Bendel talking about th getting through this we have to support each other to get to get through this I suppose what I'm trying to get into my head is have we got any sense of through this to what what does the other side look like well I think I <laughs> Can I, can I chip in there? Or were you going to say more? I don't want to cut you off. No, no, I don't. I think I've probably said more than enough. Because <laughs> I, I think that's the thing. I, I, I find these four hours great. And um, I think what they can do, and if Emma was still here, I'd sort of say to her is that if you're on a personal basis, you follow some of this and you are quite creative in your life right now, I think it gives you the energy to then possibly, yes, to fight, to do all the other things but this underpins it. And the thing I find, I guess I always come back to being in the present is, I think in order, I think what Kim and Kate are saying is that in order for some people to get them out of the kind of denial thing, there's a message about what might really happen. But I quite strongly feel that the f living the four hours is not necessarily imagining all of the scenarios that might happen in the future, you know, yeah. accepting that they may well, but there's not, that doesn't serve us because I think that takes your energy away and yeah. it really scares people. Yeah, so don't, absolutely. Don't absolutely. need to focus on those scenarios. They will happen, whatever happens. Yeah. But if you live the four hours now, then I think you then when it comes, you'd be so much better prepared for it. So yeah. I really don't think there's a need to think about all of those because we just don't know. I mean, I'm not saying they won't happen, but it's just. I, I agree, hundred percent, hundred percent agree. And uh, uh, you know, it, it's. <clears throat> Um, and you know it's kind of like it's not the case that if you lived the four hours 
as well as you possibly could now. And then, you know, it turned out not to be as bad as we thought, like you wouldn't regret that, <laughs> like, you know. Um, so yeah, I agree with you absolutely, Annabelle. Well, shall I, shall I um, just share some of the resilience things and, and we can look at these four R's in more detail. I'm sorry, the writing's so small there. Um, and, and you'll have other ideas as well, but it's kind of, a lot of them are obvious. Get as fit and healthy as possible. Um, reduce your debt as much as possible. You can do all sorts of, you know, carbon footprint impact assessment things these days, get feedback on that. Um, think about hyper-local access, water, food, energy, waste obviously growing food, reducing food waste, composting, reduce, reuse, recycle, repurpose, repair, reduce your water consumption. You know, it's extraordinary. My husband and I have been doing that for the, for the, this year. Um, like I, I, it, it's, it's extraordinary how much water we use to waste, um, you know, and, and, and um, so that, you know, that, that feels good. Um, finding your tribe, network, create relationships, get to know your neighbours, ownership of local energy, as, uh, as Emma was describing, community swap shops, uh, donut economics is, is well worth um, exploring, Kate, Way, Kate Rayworth, really, really good ideas there, citizens assemblies, um, yeah, changing how we educate children, I don't know what you think about that, Rosie as an ex- deputy head, but like, I don't think we're teaching them the skills they're gonna need at the moment. Uh, restoring old crafts, pets, question um, mark. And, and then if we move to the kind of, this is still resilience, but it's more of the inner stuff. It's staying open to our feelings, as you said, Annabelle, as they arise and change. Um, Maybe finding a spiritual practice that resonates with you. Um, like getting really good at conflict resolution, nonviolent communication, facilitation. Um, the recent the Deep Adaptation website's just been updated in the last couple of weeks. And it is, it is a fabulous, fabulous resource, I have to say, with um, you know, loads to explore on there. Um, and in fact, our website, which is the heart website, is just about to be it's in development at the moment. That's also going to have loads of resources on it. Um, and, and one of the things that I do is run these retreats, four day retreats. They're all free. Um, and uh, and that's specifically designed for people like you, people who are waking up to this, uh, to come together and, and really explore um, their own responses to it emotionally um, and find even greater depths of resilience and well-being and clarity and courage. Um, and, and, and they've been incredibly well received. So any of you are more than welcome uh, on those. Any, any comments about resilience before I move on? The outer and the inner. Yeah, I mean, I, I really buy into all of those, really. I mean, they, they comfort me, Kim. <laughs> Great. I'm glad you're finding some comfort in this, Rosie. <laughs> no, they do, because they all sort of, I agree with them, and I, I feel sort of, gosh, that's quite a relief, because I wasn't expecting to see anything sort of, Oh, I don't like to, say, like to say the word positive. That's not fair, but they're just yeah. they're very sensible yeah. ways to live. I, I, sus I suspect most of you are doing a lot of them already. And yeah. there's so much overlap there with the mitigation as well, of yeah. reducing emissions. Yeah. Yeah. It, it just feels, yes. I mean, and you know, I, I would feel those are the kind of ideas that I like to promote and talk to with people anyway. I mean, there, there's nothing there that I would say frightens me or alarms me. Great. I, love, I love them all. I love the idea of restoring old crafts and you know it's one it's wonderful to think more about poetry and singing and 
all the rest of it. I mean, it's just great. Yeah. yeah so, so thank you for that, Kim. I um, I feel a little bit, you know, <gasps> calmer in myself now. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, let's move on to relinquishment because many people find this the, in some ways, the harder one. So this is, remember the question was, what, what could we be giving up? What could we relinquish? <clears throat> Out of season food, flying, meat and animal products, shopping for non-essentials. Um, you know, it's, I, I, again, all of these um, we've been experimenting with. Um, the shopping one, uh, I used to be a real like clothesaholic um, and, and I just find I don't do it, can't do it, don't want to do it anymore. I haven't bought any clothes now for, God, it must be 18 months and I don't miss it one jot. Um, and we all know like the fashion industry, particularly how, um, you know, the implications of that on emissions. Maybe we have to relinquish this hyper individualism that's been so rife in the last few decades. Um, you know, it's all about me, me, me. And maybe we have to give up our stories, some of our stories about our identity, who we are, where we get our sense of worth from. Um, all of that kind of capitalist, you know, consumerist, um, that's, that's often a hard one. Um, we have to give up, I think, the very notion of infinite economic growth. And in fact, you know, Kate Rayworth has shown how that's possible. We can still have a thriving economy that isn't growing. Yeah. Um, but that takes care of the planet and people um, and, and well-being. Maybe we have to give up hope or at least hope for business as usual. I've certainly given that up and, and it's not impoverished my life at all. Um, judgment and othering, you know, if we really want to create societies that, that are inclusive and collaborative and loving and kind, we have to find ways of getting out of this divisive, I'm in this camp, you're in that camp adversarial politics, guilt. There's a lot of guilt around in activist circles and I think that has to go as well. <laughs> um, yeah, the latest smartphone upgrades. No, why? Um, and very importantly, this idea that, you know, this what's often called anthropocentric, this idea that humans somehow are all that matters. And seeing, it's one of the reasons why I, I, I can sometimes find myself um, getting, getting a little bit irritated when people talk about the environment as though it's something out there and something separate from us. We are that, we are life, we are the earth, we are, you know. So um, traditional education, maybe we've got to give up the idea of a pension. And what would we do then if we didn't have that? So I'm going to pause there for comments, questions, or yeah buts before moving on. It, I was just thinking that I, I find it really helpful because I think I've, this is something that I've been really in the midst of um, recently. And I'm curious, <laughs> I might just let myself off the hook, but there's something about perfectionism as well. Because I think yes. if you try to do, you know, my, my thing is I say to myself, I just do what I can. But then I actually, I think, try to do everything and yeah. then get really stuck in guilt. <laughs> and guilt is such a paralyzing kind of energy. But I guess there is something around that, yeah, that, that, that there will be some things that you can't do, you know, not, not necessarily big things, but, and that's an interesting area because you, yeah. I agree with you. I'm going to add perfectionism to that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's and 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 the kind of grandiosity that I know I've sometimes felt of, you know, it's up to me to change everything. It, it really isn't. I'll I'll do my part. I'll do my part. Anything else on relinquishing? 
I am listening. Well, to some extent, it's not quite as terrifying as it might have been. Because, you know, like probably all of us here, I, I've been trying the same to, you know, give up buying new clothes, giving up meat and... I think the one, the one that really makes me feel a bit embarrassed really is um, that kind of um, giving up your story about your identity, because I've struggled with this since giving up my job. Yes. It's like, what am I supposed to be now? And it's yes. embarrassing now when you refer to me as deputy head, because I think how crass, how embarrassing, Rosie, that you even said that. Who cares? What, who gives a toss what you were? Uh, but of course, there's that little bit of me that feels, um, well, I was a deputy head, thank you very much. Yeah, I had a role, I had a role. Of course, the problem is now, I don't have a role, do I? I mean, I've got, I've got, and it's kind of taking away the idea that you need to have a role. Or exactly, role. exactly. It's, that way. it's just taken me a bit of a time and a bit of struggle to be sort of getting there. And I'm not there yet, but I know I'm moving in that direction. Yeah. Um, though yeah. actually, in terms of, um, you, you know, uh, this is helpful to me. It's quite painful. It's quite painful um, because, um, you know, I used to love playing a role. I used to love dressing up and having nice hair and arriving yeah. and having fun. And, oh, Rosie, how lovely. It's all pathetic. I know, but I used to love all that. And it's like now um, <laughs> well, I'm floundering a bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's very, again, very natural, very human. Um, and what you have achieved in your life is still, you know, still an achievement. Um, but yeah, we do, I think, that's certainly been the case for me um, in the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, um, giving up all those stories about what success means yeah. um, and, and so on. I just wanted to read you a quick quote you may have seen, like on the back of Annabelle's comment, um, and it's Martha Postlethwaite, you may have heard it, but I love this. Do not try to save the whole world or do anything grandiose. Instead, create a clearing in the dense forest of your life and wait there patiently until the song that is yours alone to sing falls into your open cupped hands and you recognize and greet it. Only then will you know how to give yourself to this world so worthy of rescue. I find great comfort in that. Okay, moving on to restoration. And again, it's all the sorts of things that you might predict. Rewilding, permaculture, regenerative agriculture. Um, we've already talked about repairing and repurposing. A lot of these four R's overlap. Um, seeds, both like actual seeds, but also seeds of knowledge. How can we preserve and maintain, um, you know, libraries of knowledge um, that people are going to need? Um, I got a couple of friends who's made it made it their life's work um, to do assisted migration of trees by moving seeds further north, as the trees can't cope with the warming anymore um you know so uh yeah connecting with nature community living local live music shared rituals celebrations yeah a lot of them overlap um so really kind of restoring i i think how we were kind of naturally uh, meant to be as 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 humans before um, before in a in a in a in a real sense I think we just started to be deceived by this individualist consumerist how can I get more at the expense of everybody else um, because we are meant to we are we are community creatures like we are. Yeah, that's that's kind of hardwired in. I agree, and I'll just make a point at this point. Um, after lockdown one, you know, there's been so many surveys of people absolutely understanding how they've taken a step back and how they've been going for walks in nature and how they want to 
grow food in their gardens and they it's all very positive these are benefits this isn't you know yeah yeah giving up on a way of life that we all wanted to keep no no and that's thanks Kate that's one of the reasons why <coughs> I don't like I'm not terrified I mean sometimes I'm terrified if I do that those imaginary scenarios that we talked about but I tend not to do those anymore but I'm not as terrified about the idea of collapse or breakdown because um yeah I I I don't want to live in that world anymore. I don't want to live in that old world anymore, uh, which is why I closed my business down last year. Uh, it's why I do all the work I do uh, for nothing. I know I'm incredibly privileged to be able to afford that, but it just feels really good to me to, to, um, to follow my own kind of wisdom and inspiration and nudges rather than be on that hamster wheel um, as I have been all my life. Um, yeah, anything else on that? And I suppose the fact there are so many lonely people, so, so many lonely people who don't feel any connection to other people, to their community, who just, you know, that, that tells us. I mean, I, I really do buy into the idea of this kind of small community thing and going back to perhaps, you know, when my father was young and or more before then and so on. You know, I come from a farming background. Um, I suppose the dilemma is, I suppose, there are just so many of us in the world, aren't there? I mean, the population is just such an enormous issue, isn't it? If we're predicted to go up to 10 billion, aren't we? Before there might be a, a turn. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's wonderful to talk all about rewilding, uh, with all of the bringing back the old traditions and all of these wonderful things. But we're in such a privileged, privileged position here, aren't we? Absolutely. Living here, Absolutely. To be able to even start to emulate some of that. Most yes. people in the world aren't going to be able to do that, are they? They're just trying to survive if they possibly can. Absolutely. And, you know, if we think about climate refugees, um, you know, it's, it's estimated that for every degree of warming, there's going to be an extra billion climate refugees. So you're right, you know, what, where are they going to go? What are they going to do? Um, and, and how can we perhaps prepare to welcome them, you know, rather than shoot them at the wall, you know? Uh, and, and maybe, you know, and, and I know this is discussed a lot in, uh, with, when, when I'm talking to, to young people uh, for whom this is very relevant, you know, people are choosing not to have children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, that's, that's a choice that people are making very um, freely. Uh, and I so, guess, yeah, go on. I was going to say that if, if, if we've been living these things now, then when it comes to a point where there are climate refugees, maybe people will be more used to live, relinquishing their lifestyles even more. And I don't say it's gonna answer it, but you know, and maybe, yeah, it, it just, people will be more ready to make the more drastic changes that they might have to make. Um, yeah, yeah. And then lastly, reconciliation and reconnection. Again, we've talked about a lot of these. Um, yeah, intergenerational stuff as well, you know, the, the the grandparents and the parents and the children and um, yeah, that tends to happen less and less. Uh, yeah, fabulous. So. Tell me more about a death cafe. There's one in Chesham. Is there? Mm -hmm. A death cafe, wow. wow. Yeah, basically where you, you just kind of have have conversations in a very loving, kind, supportive environment to help people come to terms with, um, yeah, with their own mortality, because we live in a completely death phobic society. Yeah, 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 yeah. no, it makes sense. I hadn't quite, yeah. it's not somewhere I've ever yeah. been. And, 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 um, and again, 
uh, deep adaptation, the community there, like that's one of the many, there are about 12 things now that you can kind of sign up to and go to regularly. Um, you know, whether it's kind of um, group meditation, whether it's using your body in a certain way. Um, <clears throat> and one of them is death cafes. I've facilitated a couple of them, actually. They're very, very interesting. Wow. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and, um, you know, certainly, again, speaking personally for myself, I know I'm, you know, I'm no longer a spring chicken. I'm in the twilight years anyway. Uh, but I have, over the last 18 months, I think, completely come to terms with my own death. It doesn't, it doesn't frighten me. And, um, and there's great, again, great comfort, great freedom in that. Um, and, and the thing you said, Rosie, about, like, really prioritizing what I want to use my time for now, you know, um, rather than just, I've got to do something, anything. Um, Could I just share at this point, I'm, I'm yeah. definitely not coming to terms with my own death anytime soon, but I have come to terms with knowing I have some control over that in one sense or another. Yeah. And that's helped me. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, as I kind of hinted at earlier, what's happened for me has been unexpected and surprising. So I did have this most profound grief, <clears throat> most profound grief. And many of you have been involved in this, in this world for far, far longer than I have. But um, yeah, there was, there was a period where um, I would just sob for hours and, uh, you know, go into my garden and allow the, you know, soil to trickle through my hands. And, you know, it was really, <laughs> it was probably more, more profound grief than when either my mother died or uh, my husband of 25 years died. I mean, and that, that was, they were both real grief. This was because it was a kind of an existential grief. Um, but there's something on the other side of that, you know, and, and so many people I speak with and people on the DA, Deep Adaptation, um, in that community that I speak with regularly, like they've all found this too. Um, it doesn't just kind of, you don't just get the grief and then that carries on and on and on. We have an enormous um, built-in wellspring of um, resilience, creativity, courage, love, compassion. Um, and I found that, like, for, for me, all of those things really, um, it was like, you know, if you imagine each of them having a bucket, like, they all just filled up more and more, even more than they had been before. Um, and there was a kind of... Um, you know, I realized that everything, everything that has given my life meaning and joy and still does, um, is still here. It's all still here. And even the kind of acceptance and awareness of societal collapse doesn't change that. And like you, Annabelle, I've learned very much to live in the, in the present moment. Um, there was a recent poll actually on the Deep Adaptation Facebook and they said, finish the sentence, how do you know when you're deeply adapting? And this is what I wrote, which um, I actually pinched from Wendell Berry. Welcome back, Rosie. Um, yeah, so, and I love this. And, and I just said, I am joyful, although I have considered all the facts. And, and that, that's really kind of meaningful for me. Um, so, you may or may not know some of the answers to these questions at the moment. Um, but I'd like, I'd like to just go around, and as we're only a small group now, um, take, Take a fair bit of time 
on this. So I'd love to hear from each of you. Um, what comes up for you? So what are you taking away from this webinar? What do you feel nudged to actually do? What might be your very next step? You might not know, and that's fine. And, and what support, if any, do you feel you'd like now, whether that's practical or emotional? As I said, what I'll do following this is send you these slides um, and um, so you'll have that as a, as a resource. But yeah, who'd like to go first? Um, I'm, okay, I, well, thank you. I have to say something brief. Um, yeah, what I'm taking away from this webinar is, um, yeah, I've, I've, I found it very affirming. You know, it's, and it's nice to have a structure like the four R's actually, because they just yeah. Yeah, they give a structure to, to sort of what might be going on already. So I really appreciate that. Um, and it nudges me to kind of, and that's also nice to carry on doing what we've sort of already started, like Rosie and I, you know, getting people together locally, trying to get involved with community activities, trying to just, yeah, link people who are like-minded um, to, to work together. Um, and this has given me more energy to do that. Um, and then there's something a little bit personal about, I've really been suffering with the guilt and the choices. You know, I, I've made a lot of lifestyle changes. Um, I, yeah, I won't go into all of it, but there's some things that I've got coming up that maybe I'll give myself some permission for, and you know, um, which is actually quite helpful. Yeah. Um, and, and support is, is really just to stay connected you know, to more and more like-minded people and just live, live by the values, you know, live by the four R's as much as possible. Um, and the only other thing I was going to say, which is not that, but for you guys and, and what you're doing here with Heart, it just occurred to me that I, that often deep adaptation is the phrase that everybody remembers is societal collapse. Yeah. And, and the only thing is that maybe for introducing this, because I think many, many people out in the community would really benefit from the things that you're offering, is to maybe talk more about in times of uncertainty, because times of uncertainty and lack of control is exactly what people are experiencing in COVID. Yeah. And that's what we're really talking about. You know, we don't, it, I'm not saying societal collapse won't happen. I actually really think it will, but that's not the point. It's yeah. people struggling with not being able to control. Yeah their lives so that's what you're helping them to do to live in times of uncertainty and that's a message that maybe would not scare yeah. would to some people it puts them into a bit of a trauma reaction societal collapse so that's my only thought yeah that's really helpful thank you annabelle I love that. thanks thank you thank you yeah we've had a lot of um, conversation in heart yeah. about whether to use the word collapse or not and uh uh, but I think there's real wisdom in what you say. Yeah. yeah, I think for when we talk about going to the general public, I mean, like you say, this just isn't a message that most people are ready to hear at all. Um, local leaders, yes, we can sort of give them some shock tactics, um, but you, you're dead right. We need to sort of get this in without, to begin with at least, without, you know, people just either won't listen or will just um, deny it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sonia, do you want to go next? Yeah. Uh, sorry about my meltdowns earlier. I was uh, That's right. I was overly stressed this morning with boiler men coming and all sorts of things not going my way. Um, but yes, I'm now feeling really relaxed, and I think that um, yeah, it's it's just all of the the R's are just exactly what I expected them to be, and the webinar's pretty much what I expected it to to be. Um, I I just what I feel overwhelmed with really is how we take it to the community because I, I i truly believe that and i can't i i what i was struggling with before this is is that 
I believe societal breakdown is happening right now. And yeah. in my mind, I can't understand how other people can't see that. Oh, yes. I know. Uh, and to say that that's too harsh a word to use to me it's it's not it's what's happening um and yeah people just can't see what's happening under their own noses um so <laughs> so how, how yeah that, that's that's kind of my next thing is is how how can how can i help maybe other people see what what's happening how can i help get the word out there you know um i think that's why i was particularly stressed this morning and why december probably isn't the best time for this to happen to me because i have a lot of deniers come and see me in town and uh and stuff and i need i need a couple of days off every so often from it just to really? re-get my own thoughts back into place and go it doesn't matter <laughs> I just but yeah so um no it's it's been nice it's been nice to to see other people on the on the journey yeah yeah thank you so much yeah i agree with you about the collapses all around us thing i think i think that's why i was a bit thrown at emma's question earlier um because it's you know it's kind of like can't you see it <laughs> um I think, yeah, I think she wants us to be able to have those things like that ready. Um, it's fair enough, but especially when you you know you talk, you're going to be talking to politicians or whatever. They're going to yeah be trying to find holes and everything. We think yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, it was a valid question. Unfortunately, planting tree, giving everyone a tree, is just not going to work. It's it's you know I'd, I'd love to be able to go down my whole street and I know if I knocked on every single door most of them would go no don't want your tree. So. Yeah, it's, it's you know it's finding the balance, isn't it? It's like if you give them all a blueberry bush, possibly they will. More of them will to begin with. <laughs> Which yeah. is yeah what we're finding with our community growing mm. projects, aren't we, Sonia? You know, yeah, yes. a lot of acceptance, and then you can get other things in. Yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant, Sonia. Thank you, Rosie. I mean, I think, I think actually, I feel much better at the end of this than I expected to. I know, I know, because I was. I mean, I have to say, I wasn't really looking forward to it. I was feeling this is going to be a bit of an ordeal for me, um, and I don't want to feel terribly sad and grief stricken. And although I have had moments when we've been talking today when I have felt very, very sad, that's actually moved away at the moment into, into some other kind of feeling of more, um, I feel more hopeful again. Um, when you talk about, you know, deep adaptation, trying to repair, talking to people about preparing to live their lives in a very different way, that to me, makes a great deal of sense. Yeah. Um, and that is what we're getting, that's what we're trying to do, to live our lives in a very different, more sustainable, more resilient, more ki kinder, Absolutely. loving way. And, it's know, not, really and, it, and that doesn't mean a more grim way, necessarily. No, it doesn't. No, in many ways, it means a way that I would rather, very much rather live my life anyway. Um, it's so, uh, although the word societal collapse, you know, I do see where, where you're coming from with that. I think I'm preferring to sort of have it in my head as living life in a very different, better way, really. And that is, you know, and in terms of talking to other people about it, I think that really helps me to have yeah. that as the, the message. Um, and actually quite astonishingly, Kim, you know, when you talk about a four-day retreat, I begin to think that sounds like a really quite an interesting experience. And um, it is, yeah. There is a time when I might want to, to do that. Whereas, I think when you first mentioned it, when I first met you, I was thinking, Ooh, "God, that sounds yeah. <laughs> very, very, very heavy." Yeah. Actually, no, it's is, not. It's not. I mean, there are there are little heavy parts of it, but it's. It's, it, it actually winds up being uh, an incredible 
incredibly connected, loving, mm. grateful, um, creative space. Yeah. You know, so I'm actually surprised at how much more um, hopeful I feel now than I did two hours ago. So um, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and I've really enjoyed and I've really enjoyed meeting you, Sonia, as well. Um, and I want to get, make my way down to St. Albans Market, where I go quite regularly to meet friends and come and find you. Oh, more than welcome. As I say, usually it's, it's me or Danny uh, and okay. we'll be either outside Metro Bank or until Christmas, you can Christmas Eve, you can probably find me, mostly me, uh, outside WH Smith's. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. No, no, that's great. What I, what I will, I'll, I'll, I'm very interested to come and meet you and see what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, no, I, I feel encouraged. And it's really good to have Annabelle there as my... Um, yeah. Three Rivers. Yeah. yeah. Mate. <laughs> yeah. And, and Kate, um, anything you want to add at this point? I don't think so. I think what Annabelle was saying about just keeping connected now is... is going to be wonderful it's just I think when you first come to terms with these kind of things you can feel quite alone and it's just so nice to come into a community where you can freely speak and bounce ideas off and yeah yeah absolutely absolutely yeah fantastic um well it looks like we're going to finish early folks mm -hmm. um if that's all right with you, although I'm very happy to stay on till till 12 and just uh, have conversations. But I think you can also, you know, when I said the other day on the meeting with um, Ellen, I think it was Rosie. Yeah, um, that, you know, you can see you can see our come from um, means that a lot of the things that people like Joe Hewitson are asking us to get involved with, it's like, Mm. you know and I completely agree with Kate that you know if it is all about networks and relationships and collaborations then you know maybe we <clears throat> maybe that's all worth you know a lot of that's worth doing anyway not because of the activities but because of the connections we'll make yeah I think that makes really good sense yeah but in in my defense, I just get a lot of pleasure out of doing that. So it's not necessarily going to be for everyone. Yeah, I, I think I haven't met Joe, but talking to Ellen and Ellie, I think it was in Three Rivers Council. I think they a lot of the, the I can't remember which are it comes under, but you know, a lot of those activities, they're pretty open to, you know, I, I think they and actually Ellie uh, sounded like she was fully on board with, you know, the most drastic implications of things so I think yeah I don't think they've got very set views I think they're really they mostly want to build community engagement um, yeah absolutely and yeah no it's lovely how open they are and you know I think they they do in some senses have their hands tied behind their back with what they're what they're able to do um, you know and how radical it is yeah yeah very good. All righty. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming along and for your time and your participation and your energy. Uh, I really appreciate it. I will send you the slide deck, as I said. I'll also send you that little Martha Postlethwaite poem. Um, and if any of you want to kind of jump on a call and, 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 and have more of a kind of a one-to-one, -one, whether it's about, um, you know, uh, whether it's about the guilt or the perfectionism or the, you know, any of the feelings that you're experiencing, that's what I spend most of my life doing is having conversations with people about that stuff. So feel free to take advantage. And, uh, and yeah, I'm sure we will see each other very soon, but thank you all for coming. Yeah, thanks Kim. And, and Sonia, can I just say, you know, if you ever want to just go for a walk or meet up and sit on a bench for a bit, I'd be very happy to do that if you've ever got any time free. <laughs>
brilliant, fab. <laughs> yeah, and, and have a really enjoyable Christmas, whatever that means to you, all of you. Yeah. So, um, as I kind of hinted at earlier, what's happened for me has been unexpected and surprising. So I did have this most profound grief, <clears throat> most profound grief. And many of you have been involved in this, in this world for far, far longer than I have. But um, yeah, there was, there was a period where um, I would just sob for hours and, uh, you know, go into my garden and allow the, you know, soil to trickle through my hands. And, you know, it was really, <laughs> it was probably more, more profound grief than when either my mother died or uh, my husband of 25 years died. I mean, and that, that was, they were both real grief. This was because it was a kind of an existential grief. Um, but there's something on the other side of that, you know, and, and so many people I speak with and people on the DA, Deep Adaptation, um, in that community that I speak with regularly, like they've all found this too. Um, it doesn't just kind of, you don't just get the grief and then that carries on and on and on. We have an enormous um, built in wellspring of um, resilience, creativity, courage, love, compassion. Um, and I found that like for, for me, all of those things really, um, it was like, you know, if you imagine each of them having a bucket, like they all just filled up more and more, even more than they had been before. Um, and there was a kind of, um, you know, I realized that everything, everything that has given my life meaning and joy and still does, um, is still here. It's all still here. And even the kind of acceptance and awareness of societal collapse doesn't change that. And like you, Annabelle, I've learned very much to live in the, in the present moment. Um, there was a recent poll actually on the Deep Adaptation Facebook, and they said, finish the sentence, how do you know when you're deeply adapting? And this is what I wrote, which um, I actually pinched from Wendell Berry. Welcome back, Rosie. Um, yeah, so, and I love this. And, and I just said, I am joyful, although I have considered all the facts. And, and that, that's really kind of meaningful for me. Um, so, You may or may not know some of the answers to these questions at the moment. Um, but I'd like, I'd like to just go around, and as we're only a small group now, um, take, take a fair bit of time on this. So I'd love to hear from each of you. Um, what comes up for you? So what are you taking away from this webinar? What do you feel nudged to actually do? What might be your very next step? You might not know, and that's fine. And, and what support, if any, do you feel you'd like now, whether that's practical or emotional? As I said, what I'll do following this is send you these slides, um, and um, so you'll have that as a, as a resource. But yeah, who'd like to go first? Um, I'm okay I, well thank you I have to say something brief um yeah what I'm taking away from this webinar is um yeah I've, I've I found it very affirming you know it's and it's nice to have a structure like the four hours actually because they just yeah. yeah they do give a structure to to sort of what might be going on already so I really appreciate that um and it nudges me to kind of and that's also nice to carry on doing what we've sort of already started like Rosie and I you know getting people together locally trying to get involved with community activities trying to just yeah link people who are like-minded 
um, to, to work together. Um, and this has given me more energy to do that. Um, and then there's something a little bit personal about I've really been suffering with the guilt and the choices. You know, I, I've made a lot of lifestyle changes. Um, I, yeah, I won't go into all of it, but there's some things that I've got coming up that maybe I'll give myself some permission for. And, you know, um, which is actually quite helpful. Yeah. Um, and and support is is really just to stay connected, you know, right. to more and more like minded people and just live live by the values you know live by the four hours as much as possible um and the only other thing i was going to say which is not that but for you guys and and what you're doing here with heart it just occurred to me that i that often deep adaptation is the phrase that everybody remembers is societal collapse yeah and and the only thing is that maybe for introducing this because i think many many people out in the community would really benefit from the things that you're offering is to maybe talk more about in times of uncertainty, because times of uncertainty and lack of control is exactly what people are experiencing in COVID. Yeah. And that's what we're really talking about. You know, we don't, it, I'm not saying societal collapse won't happen. I actually really think it will, but that's not the point. It's yeah. people struggling with not being able to control yeah. their lives. So that's what you're helping them to do, to live in times of uncertainty. And that's a message that maybe would, not scare yeah. would because some people it puts them into a bit of a trauma reaction societal collapse so that's my only thought no, that's really helpful thank you annabelle i love that thanks thank you thank you yeah we've had a lot of um, conversation in heart yeah. about whether to use the word collapse or not and uh uh but i think there's real wisdom in what you say yeah, yeah. i think for when we talk about going to the general public, I mean, like you say, this just isn't a message that most people are ready to hear at all. Um, local leaders, yes, we can sort of give them some shock tactics, um, but you, you're dead right. We need to sort of get this in without, to begin with at least, without, you know, people just either won't listen or will just um, deny it. Okay. Sonia, do you want to go next? Yeah. Uh, sorry about my meltdowns earlier. I was... Uh, That's all right. I'm overly stressed this morning with boiler men coming and all sorts of things not going my way. Um, but yes, I'm now feeling really relaxed. And I think that, um, yeah, it's, it's just... All of the the R's are just exactly what I expected them to be, and the webinar is pretty much what I expected it to to be. Um, I I just what I feel overwhelmed with really is how we take it to the community because I I, I truly believe that. And I can't, I, I, what I was struggling with before this is, is that I believe societal breakdown is happening right now. And yeah. in my mind, I can't understand how other people can't see that. Oh, yes. I know. Uh, and to say that that's too harsh a word to use, to me, it's, it's not. It's what's happening. Um, and yeah, people just can't see what's happening under their own noses. Um, so, so how, how yeah that, that's that's kind of my next thing is is how how can how can I help maybe other people see what what's happening how can I help get the word out there you know um I think that's why I was particularly stressed this morning and why December probably isn't the best time for this to happen to me because I have a lot of deniers come and see me in town and uh and stuff and i need i need a couple of days off every so often from it just to really re get my own thoughts back into place and go it doesn't matter <laughs> just but yeah so um no it's it's been nice it's been nice to to see other people on the on the journey yeah yeah thank you so much yeah, I agree with you about the collapses all around us thing. I think, I think that's why I was a bit thrown at Emma's question earlier, 
um because it's you know it's kind of like can't you see it <laughs> um I th- um, yeah i think she wants us to be able to have those things like that ready um it's fair enough but especially when you you know you talk you're going to be talking to politicians or whatever they're gonna yeah be trying to find holes and everything we think yeah yeah absolutely yeah no it was a perfect valid question unfortunately planting tree giving everyone a tree is just not gonna work it's it's you know I, i'd love to be able to go down my whole street and i know if i knocked on every single door most of them would go no don't want your tree um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's finding the balance, isn't it? It's like, if you give them all a blueberry bush, possibly they will. More of them will, to begin with. Mm. <laughs> Which yeah. is yeah, what we're finding with our community growing mm. project, aren't we, Sonia? You know, yes. yeah, a lot of acceptance and then you can get other things in. Yeah. With that. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant, Sonia. Thank you. Rosie. I mean, I think... I think actually I feel much better at the end of this than I expected to. I know, I know, because I was, I mean, I have to say, I wasn't really looking forward to it. I was feeling this is going to be a bit of an ordeal for me. um, And I don't want to feel terribly sad and grief stricken. And although I have had moments when we've been talking today when I have felt very, very sad, that's actually moved away at the moment into into some other kind of feeling of more um i feel more hopeful again um when you talk about you know deep adaptation trying to repair talking to people about preparing to live their lives in a very different way that to me makes a great deal of sense yeah um and that is what we're getting that's what we're trying to do to live our lives in a very different more sustainable more resilient, more ki- kinder, Absolutely. loving way. And, it's know, not, really and, it, and that doesn't mean a more grim way, necessarily. No, it doesn't. No, in many ways, it means a way that I would rather, very much rather live my life anyway. Um, it's so, uh, uh, although the word societal collapse, you know, I do see where, where you're coming from with that. I think I'm preferring to sort of have it in my head as, living life in a very different, better way, really. And that is, you know, and in terms of talking to other people about it, I think that really helps me to have yeah. that as the, the message. Um, and actually quite astonishingly, Kim, you know, when you talk about a four day retreat, I begin to think that sounds like a really quite an interesting experience. And um, it is, yeah. There is a time when I might want to, to do that. Whereas I think when you first mentioned it, when I first met you, I was thinking, Ooh, God, that sounds yeah. <laughs> very, very, very heavy. Yeah. Actually, no, it's is- not. It's not. I mean, there are there are little heavy parts of it, but it's it's it it actually winds up being uh, an incredible, incredibly connected, loving, mm. grateful um creative space yeah you know so i'm actually surprised at how much more um hopeful i feel now than i did two hours ago so um thank you thank you for that um and i've really enjoyed and i've really enjoyed meeting you sonia as well um and i want to get make my way down to saint Albans market where i go quite regularly to meet friends and Come and find you. Oh, more than welcome. As I say, usually it's, it's me or Danny, uh, and okay. we'll be either okay. outside Metro Bank or until Christmas. You can Christmas Eve. You can probably find me, mostly me, uh, outside W H Smiths. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. No, no, that's great. What I what I will. I'll, I'll, I'm very interested to come and meet you and see what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. So um, no, I, I I feel encouraged. And it's really good to have Annabelle there as my um, yeah three rivers yeah. Yay. mate <laughs> yeah and and Kate um, anything you want to add at this point I don't think so I think what Annabelle was saying about just keeping connected now is is, is going to be wonderful it's just 
I think when you first come to terms with these kind of things, you can feel quite alone. And it's just so nice to come into a community where you can freely speak and bounce ideas off. And yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, fantastic. Um, well, it looks like we're going to finish early, folks. Mm. Um, if that's all right with you, although I'm very happy to stay on till, till 12 and just uh, have conversations. But I think you can also, you know, I said the other day on the meeting with um, Ellen, I think it was, Rosie, yeah. um, that, you know, you can see, you can see our come from um, means that a lot of the things that people like Joe Hewitson are asking us to get involved with, it's like, <sighs> you know, and... I completely agree with Kate that, you know, if it is all about networks and relationships and collaborations, then, you know, maybe we, <clears throat> maybe that's all worth, you know, a lot of that's worth doing anyway, not because of the activities, but because of the connections we'll make. Yeah, I think that makes really good sense. Yeah. But in, in my defence, I just get a lot of pleasure out of doing that. So it's not necessarily going to be for everyone. Yeah, I, I think I haven't met Joe, but talking to Ellen and Ellie, I think it was in Three Rivers Council, I think they a lot of the, the I can't remember which are it comes under, but, you know, a lot of those activities they're pretty open to, you know, I, I think they and actually Ellie uh, sounded like she was fully on board with, you know, the most drastic implications of things. So I think, yeah, I, I don't think they've got very set views. I think they're really they mostly want to build community engagement. Um, yeah absolutely and yeah no it's lovely how open they are and you know I think they they do in some senses have their hands tied behind their back with what they're what they're able to do mm. um, you know and how radical it is yeah mm. yeah very good all righty well listen thank you so much for coming along and for your time and your participation and your energy uh, I really appreciate it I will send you the slide deck as I said mm. I'll also send you that little Martha Postlethwaite poem mm. um, and if any of you want to kind of jump on a call and and, and, and have more of a kind of a one-to-one -one, whether it's about um, you know uh, whether it's about the guilt or the perfectionism or the, you know, any of the feelings that you're experiencing, that's what I spend most of my life doing is having conversations with people about that stuff. So feel free to take advantage. And, uh, and yeah, I'm sure we will see each other very soon, but thank you all for coming. Yeah. Thanks Kim. And, and Sonia, can I just say, you know, if you ever want to just go for a walk or, meet up and sit on a bench for a bit I'd be very happy to do that if you've ever got any time free <laughs> <laughs> brilliant fab <laughs> yeah. and and have a really enjoyable christmas whatever that means to you all of you <laughs>